Mother Teresa had a, a, a really beautiful line. She said, poverty was not created by God, but by you and I, because we haven't lived into this command to love our neighbor as ourselves. So I'm, I'm a believer that God didn't mess up and make too many people or not enough food or resources to go around, but we've, we've, uh, we, we've lived into patterns that are unsustainable and that not only are hurting the poor, but they're hurting the wealthy too, as we now see like, uh, uh, less than a hundred people own the same amount as half of the world's population. It's funny because sometimes skeptics will say to me, oh, you can't, end, you can't end hunger. You know, God said the poor will always be with you. And I think there's a lot of scriptures that we've very badly abused and misused. But I, I think one of the things that you look at the early church, I mean, here is the church in its innocence and at the earliest days, what happens at Pentecost as the church is born is that everybody starts sharing. And it says no one, they, they do other things too, like speak in tongues and you know worship and all these beautiful things. But then it also says that no one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. And then it goes on to say, and there were no needy persons among them. So I, not only do I believe that we can end hunger and homelessness and poverty, I know that we can. You know, we need to remove the hands that have covered the ears of so many people in power and say, just listen. Because at the end of the day, uh, this, this, this faith is, is about compassion, loving our neighbor. It, even the, the, the scripture says we can have faith to move mountains and speak in the tongues of men and of angels and do all sorts of miracles and prophecies. But if we don't have love, it's still empty. And in the end, I think Mother Teresa is right also where she says, it may become very fashionable to talk about the hungry, but not as fashionable to talk to them. And if we really care about the poor, then we know their names. They're a part of our family. They were in each other's lives. So I think the real, the, sometimes the real challenge is not charity, but it's relational justice that we get involved in the lives of those who hurt. And then that, that causes us not just to wanna uh, share food with the hungry, but to ask, why are there people hungry while so many people have so much more than they need? Well, there's just one other biblical story that I love that we didn't talk about, and it's, it's uh, the feeding of the thousands. And the, the reason I love that story is that, it, you know, it, Jesus has been preaching for a while and everybody starts to get hungry. And it's interesting because the disciples, they notice that there's all of these hungry people and they come to Jesus and they, they, they say, hey, Jesus, all these people are hungry. You need to do something. And Jesus' response is, is brilliant. He looks right back at them and he says, you do something. Feed the people. And as the story goes, there's a little kid that's got a lunch he's willing to share, you know, a few fish and loaves. And they take it and give it to Jesus. And Jesus adds a little God stuff or something, you know, and, and all of a sudden everybody starts to eat and there's baskets left over. And what I love about that story is that that little kid got to be a part of the miracle and all the disciples got to be a part of the miracle. Jesus refused the temptation from the devil to turn stones into bread. And I think part of why he did that is because for some strange reason, God doesn't want to change the world without us.